All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now today is going to be kind of another off video. We're still trying to diagnose what is wrong with the Tegi. I've literally looked it up online. It doesn't seem like anybody has had the same exact issue that I have had. So let me just explain the symptoms. Maybe one of you guys could uh, help me if we don't figure out what's wrong with it in this video. So basically it's a crank no start. The check engine light is solid. So that most likely means that the ECU is bad, right? So then inside this ECU, I literally looked at it for probably 35 to 45 minutes, checked all the capacitors, checked everything. Everything looks like it's still intact. There's, it doesn't smell. There's no leaking capacitors. There's nothing like that. So I seriously do not know what else could be wrong in the ECU. So if you guys have anything I could check in here, that could lead me in the right direction of what is causing my ECU not to work. I checked all the fuses underneath the hood. Nothing is blown checked all these accessory ones nothing is blown either so it doesn't seem to me that we have a shorted wire because i'm pretty sure if you did it would obviously most likely blow a fuse so i just don't know what else could be the problem i tried my other friend's ecu uh it worked but the thing was it didn't stay on obviously because it didn't have the tune chip in it but i kept telling my tuner what's going on and he told me if i left it on long enough it would most likely fry that ecu too which is kind of weird because usually when something actually gets fried in the ecu you could physically see it but in this case, I literally can't see anything. But today, we're gonna take apart some of the dashboard. Like I said, I think what we're gonna do is start over here. Uh, some guy commented to check the, not the actual ignition cylinder, but there's some solder joints on the back or something that might have came loose. So I don't know, we're gonna take this part. It's already falling off anyways. There's my ghetto horn. Now we're also gonna take out the glove box, see if there's anything behind the glove box that is uh, frayed, shorted, anything like that. I honestly almost think that that uh, converter jumper harness could be causing it as well. It, probably not, but it is just a cheap eBay one. And I'm sure if there was something wrong with that thing, I would probably be able to tell. I already went over it multiple times. So yeah, guys, it just honestly sucks. Also, I probably need a new battery too. So I'm also gonna check at the alternator, see if there's anything shorted on the alternator for some reason, because I've heard that if a wire is shorted on the alternator, if it breaks loose from the bracket or whatever, it could also cause issues and possibly even fry the ECU so we're gonna check that out as well but with that said let's just go ahead and start tearing this bad boy apart all right so let's go ahead let's tear this thing off of here so that came out pretty easily don't really see any shorted wires I don't know what this is this is probably from when I installed my quick release some wires up here um, it doesn't look like it would cause any sort of problem to be honest um, cause that's just SRS horn, which is grounded out right there. Doesn't really make too much of a difference. All right guys, so here is underneath the steering wheel. Not really sure why any of this would really relate to the ECU, except for maybe this, like the guy was saying on my comments. Um, so all these solder joints look to be pretty good. My thought is there's some solder joint in the car that probably got vibrated loose from all these vibrations. But as you can see, everything's pretty solid underneath of here. Doesn't look like anything's frayed or anything like that. So pretty sure everything is good over here. It's not like I'm having any sort of ignition issues where it won't even crank or whatever, you know? All right guys, so it looks like everything is pretty solid over here. Don't see any disconnecting lines or shorted wires or anything like that. So pretty sure that's good. Let me know if you guys know if anything else to check over here that could cause the ECU to be fried for some odd reason. All right, so I got the glove box out. I just removed the two bolts underneath of it. Not really sure why I did this. I was hoping I had more access back here to more wires. And the more I'm doing this, the more I realize why am I doing this? I think honestly, I had to be on this side of the car. I think I'm gonna take out my gauge cluster and see what else is behind there. Because I remember when the car did decide to work sometimes, it would make like this really weird kind of like popping sound. I don't know if that's because of uh, I really do not know. I don't know why I did that. It might have just been the relay clicking on or something. So I think we're going to move our attention over here. It kind of sucks because that's going to take a little bit to get those gauges out because they are all wired up. 
and kind of annoyingly but let's just get it done enough complaining let's try to see if we can figure out anything behind the dash is what is causing our issue hopefully it's just something simple that i've been missing this whole time but we'll see all right guys so i got the cluster off the only gauge i couldn't get off is the boost gauge i don't know why this one's made like this but you can't just disconnect it so all these wires are to the gauges, to the grounds, to various things, but I'm pretty sure if I had a problem with this, I would know it just for the plain fact that um, they wouldn't work. Something was shorted out, but it's all wired to this uh, cigarette lighter. They all work fine, nothing's wrong with that, so don't really think I need to worry about any of this wiring. But we are just gonna go ahead and take out this, uh, this speedometer. It needs to be probably soldered anyways because whenever I'm going, it doesn't go past, like, I don't know, it just starts bouncing around. You guys saw it in my video probably. Same with the RPMs. Can't really tell what RPMs I'm at. So probably just needs to be re-soldered. Let's take that out. It's only held in by a couple bolts and see what's behind it. It's getting stuck on something back there. Pretty sure it's just on, okay, that's it. Could be wrong though. That really seems a little. This doesn't give me access to Jack. What the hell, man? All right, there we go. It's out. As you can see, it doesn't really give you access to much behind the dashboard. I mean, the firewall is literally right here. The only things that uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna trace is most likely the main relay wire um or the wiring harness that goes to the main relay and see what's up with that but this car is an absolute mess oh my gosh literally everything all over the place the back seat's not even in properly got the ecu got a bunch of bull crap back there i mean it's just going great you know pretty much took apart the whole inside of my car still haven't found the issue but you know everything's going great guys all right guys so i think i figured out how to actually solve this problem all i gotta do is take out this little check engine light bulb and it's never going to come on again so check that out you know it should just fire right back up now that the check engine light is gone nothing is going to cause it to stop of course i'm just kidding guys wish it was that simple all right guys so we're actually going to deal with the cluster later on don't really feel like dealing with it right now and it is most likely not the cause of one of our problems so let's just put this to the side Again, with all the other crap in my car, probably gonna end up losing something and it's just not gonna be any good. So we'll just leave that back there so that, you know, it could get damaged and somebody could sit on it. You know, honestly, I think I might know what the problem is also. Like this thing just hasn't been acting its normal self. It's almost like something has been inside of it. I think it just needs an exorcism and it should be back in business. So probably gonna call the priest right now, have him come down, exercise this bad boy and see if that helps. All right, but for real guys, I seriously do not know what could be causing this. I literally do not think any of this interior is causing any of this. I'm probably just wasting my time to be honest with you. Now, I do remember there was some aftermarket wires underneath of this little, you know, fruitcake stand right here, but they're definitely not connected to power. So uh, I don't think it would do anything like that. All right guys, so what I think I'm going to do now is try to button this up as best as I can for now. You know, get some more wiring issues because I have about 7,000 wires up here getting ready to be shorted out on each other. So that'll be fun once it shorts out and then I have a fire in here and this project will just be burned to the ground and I'll never have to worry about it ever again. All right, let's just get this bad boy in here. Stuck, let's bring it up like that. You know, so it falls on my head when I'm crawling up underneath the dash in a second. Slide this bad boy back in here as best as we can. Yeah, that looks that's good enough. Good enough for government work right there. Some people just walked by and saw me talking to this camera and probably think I'm crazy right now. Alright guys, so also one more thing, one more question. I actually took this relay from a junkyard car. I actually took like two or three and it seemed to work and i opened them up everything seemed to work i tried three and they worked but i don't know does it matter if it's not the actual relay for the integra because i know a lot of honda parts are actually swappable so um i think i'm running like a civic relay right now but it's basically this 
same i don't know if that would cause any issues maybe i'm just a complete idiot and that's what is causing all these issues and all i have to do is drive down to the auto parts store get the actual uh right uh stupid main relay and then get a new ecu and everything will be fine but i don't think it's that simple can't be that much apart especially since it plugs right in but we're gonna crawl back underneath this dash right now and see if we can figure out where that relay is actually connected see if we can trace the wiring harness and see if any of it is frayed shorted or you know whatever's wrong with it all right we're gonna take off this little fuse box real quick uh, let me mess up the camera oh yeah that sounds good you know, to be honest, I'm probably causing more wiring issues just doing whatever I'm doing today. This ain't coming out. Oh, look what I just found. A little fuse grabber. All right, guys, so I think this is where I'm going to cut the video, to be honest, because I still haven't found anything, and I feel like I'm not making any progress. I don't want to give up, but to be honest, I do not know what I'm looking for. I don't know what could cause an ECU to fry, except for like major things like uh, reverse polarity on the battery, stuff like that. But other than that, I seriously do not know what this could be. I just went under the hood, checked again. The alternator seems to be fine. It's not like broken off the bracket. Everything's connected. I have the rubber boot over the positive terminal on that now i also do think my car does have some sort of parasitic draw uh it could pop i don't know if the ecu with it like malfunctioning or whatever it's doing could cause a parasitic draw on the car i don't know if that's how it works but uh me and my friend were trying to diagnose it the other night and it didn't seem like anything was on in the whole car the radio was off gauges were off um you know everything that you would think would cause a parasitic draw any lights on doors open stuff like that everything seemed to be pretty good so i'm almost positive there's something wrong with the ecu internally that you cannot see or possibly even with the tune uh, i don't want to bother my tuner anymore i don't know what is going on it's really just getting annoying i'm just not very experienced with this whole tuning stuff so I don't know if the ECU could just go bad internally like that without being able to see like a crack or you know something wrong with the ECU. So give me your suggestions in the comments down below guys because I am absolutely burnt out. I seriously do not know what could be causing this. I'm on the verge of just buying a new ECU and just shipping it straight up. But I don't want to waste money so if I do that I'll probably just buy like a junkyard ECU try to get it for as cheap as possible. But then again it could just be the ECU again because it was at the junkyard. So yeah, any help really does help, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have had anything similar to this. Spark is good, um, fuel pressure is good, air is obviously good. So yeah, like I said, leave any comments down below that could be helpful. Subscribe if you're not already, like the video if you enjoyed. I know it's just kind of like another one of these videos. You guys wanna see the car out on the road, I know. There's nothing I could do about it though. It's sitting here, it's just a rock. Do not know what is going on with it. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out, guys.